What is up? It's Rollin' Dirty coming back at you with another video. This time I joined the Cutout Club. And not in the way you'd expect um, from high speed cutout, but uh, while braking, the wheel decided to, uh, to burn up a couple MOSFETs. And as you can see, it starts to tilt back here and then it dumps me off here when the light turns, turns off. Wasn't too bad, actually. I'm pretty big, um, pretty big guy, so we tend to hit the ground harder. But all in all, I get, came away with just a couple superficial scrapes. My gear really helped me out, especially my knee pads, and my wrist guards, because I nailed both of those. Anyway, the rest of this video will be about me replacing the motherboard on the uh, Sherman Max. Shout out to Jason at E Wheels for getting me that motherboard basically overnight. Appreciate it much. Motor leads. They're color marked green, blue, and silver, I presume, because that doesn't look marked. Green goes here, blue goes here, blue to the middle, green to the outside one here, and silver to the far outside one by the fans. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and keep doing a little more work here, and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. But basically, my next steps are to to, uh, to begin unplugging all these connectors in preparation for unscrewing all these screws here to pull this circuit board off of the aluminum um, heat sink through which the air runs. Um, from the front to back through the chassis through these vents Vent there The vent there pushes air right through there while keeping moisture off the board, but uh, keeping those MOSFETs cooler Total of 12 MOSFETs from my initial count. We'll see when I get the board off Back in a bit So here's the good news guys all the connectors seem to be color-coded um, Which makes it easier to identify you know where they plug back in such as these guys right here, the black ones go in the black connector and the white ones go in the white connectors. And the pin counts are fairly disparate, so it should be fairly obvious if you have, uh, if you've got the color down, where those go back. Um, something that was a little kind of, a little bit of a bear to unplug are these little guys over here, the battery charging connectors. There's just not very, not very much room to grab those, but I was able to get them out. Looks like this transformer comes out too. Uh, I'm gonna bring it out with the whole unit, so I'm not gonna plug. I'm not gonna unplug it because I'm gonna. I'm gonna use the new one that E Wheel sent me. But I think at this point, I really just uh, I've got everything un unplugged as far as I can tell. Guess we'll find out when I go to lift it out. But I need to unscrew all the MOSFETs here. There's a series of six right here, and then underneath the board, there's a few more screws here as well to go to another six MOSFETs, so far as I can tell. Anyway, any rate, so that's the count, guys. That's the count on the Sherman um, Sherman Max. Six MOSFETs. Now, if you compare that, or six six MOSFETs for um, on each bank, totaling 12. Now, if you compare that with, for example, the EX30 coming out from Bigode, yes, it's got a bigger motor. Yes, it's a heavier vehicle. Um, but it's got 36 MOSFETs. So... I don't know if the number of MOSFETs has anything to do with whether or not um, I cut out, but I suspect it does, and I'm, I'm fairly certain there are conditions that apply uh, for a cutout of the, the kind that I had that could be mitigated um, if, you're, if you're aware of them. And um, in my case, you know, um, in my case, the, the cutout was um, totally unexpected. I'd just gotten on the wheel and uh, I was going downhill and it began to slow down and it just you know the 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 wheel just slowly leaned back more and more until it threw me off and uh, fortunately I was able to get to the side of the road I'll put some f uh, footage in this uh, in this video showing you what happened to cause this uh, that caused me to cut out but um, I asked e-wheels if they knew 
if they knew anything about the circumstances around these cutouts, they reported they've sold about 300 of these wheels and had now five cutouts, so it's not real common. But my suspicions are that the duty cycle of the electronics here, specifically the MOSFETs, the tolerance on those is probably pretty tight to what the wheel can do and is able to do. And if you push it beyond that, then you get a blown MOSFET and you get dumped. So I don't know, but that's, that's my guess. And I think this is the reason we're seeing more, more and more MOSFETs on the newer wheels because they realize that, um, that they need to spread the load out a little more in order to reduce the, uh, the likelihood of a cutout due to a, a blown MOSFET. All right, back at it. I'm going to go ahead and take these screws out and then I will come back and show what it looks like once the board's out. All right, guys, I've got the board out. It wasn't very complicated. One screw for each MOSFET and then uh, one, two, three, four other screws that hold the board on on the one side where there aren't MOSFETs. And you can see what the bottom of the board looks like. A total of 12 MOSFETs. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this in exactly the opposite way that I did. Uh, I took it out. And the last thing I'll connect will be the power connectors. I'll connect all the auxiliary connections first. Be back in a bit. All right, guys, the board's in. Um, I got to connect all the wiring. But first, before I do that, I wanted to just point something out. When you're putting this board in, uh, it's easier if you just, you see there's an, there's um, some of these spacers, got a spare here, that go underneath the board for the screws that are not MOSFET screws. So that's this one here, that one there, and then there's two screws on this transformer back here, which is actually a separate PCB connected to the main board by a little... Yeah, it's not a ribbon cable, but, you know, a series of wires here in a single connector. At any rate, to get this board in without dropping all those spacers, since they're kind of free-floating until you get them held in with a screw, I recommend putting the two screws in the transformer, um, in, the, in the transformer holes here real quick before before you even bring the board down in. Set up the two set up all spacers on top of the openings, and then tilt the main board like at a forty five degree angle this way, so that it's not interrupting or bumping the other spacers, and then drop the screws that are already in the board through the through the tops of those spacers for the for this um, power supply right here, this transformer. That way you've got screws inside spacers on these two over here, which are the most likely to get pushed out of the way and fall down these openings here. And you can gently secure them without tightening them all the way before setting the rest of the board down on the other two. And then you've just got the other two to line up with screws. And that's not that complicated. I uh, didn't find that that difficult. I got it on the first try. So that's my recommendation because otherwise these spacers are going to be a massive bugger for some people if they, if they do it differently than that I, I think it's just uh, they're going to lose them down these openings here and it's going to be really frustrating just a tip all right I'm going to connect the uh, I'm going to connect the wires back up here and I'll be back when it's uh, all connected all right guys I got it all back together as you can see there's now a bunch of wires reconnected to the board uh, down here I've got all of the connections on these uh, smaller ribbon like cables um, including the display and then I've got all of the three phases to the motor I believe there's are phases three phases to the motor that's what that is my charging cables I believe that uh, small cable down there like right there is the battery balancing cable or some kind of a data cable I don't know what it is but I got it connected put the new transformer in like I talked about earlier and I checked all of the torque on all of the uh, MOSFETs here to verify that they're they're snug but not too tight. It is aluminum, so and they are small screws, so don't don't tighten those too hard, guys. Just snug. And then I've got the fans connected over here too. And most importantly, I've also got the batteries reconnected. Now, not last time, I tried to reconnect these batteries after taking them um, 
se separating the connection initially when I couldn't get the motor to power on, um, I thought maybe, you know, I can reset the board by unplugging the batteries. So I unplugged the batteries when I went to plug one back in. Um, there was quite a bit of heat in one of those connectors. I pulled it away real quick. So I've checked that connector out. Looks like it's okay. Cleaned up the contacts a little bit before I put it back together. And hopefully we'll be fine there. But um, but just a word of warning for those of you that you think you've burned up a MOSFET or something. Um, if you disconnect your batteries before you're sure that it's a MOSFET um, and you decide to reconnect them, you, you may end up causing a fire. So just, just be careful about that. If there's a MOSFET that's shorted to ground and you connect the battery, it's going to send power right through positive, right to ground. It's a direct short, so it's going to produce some heat. And uh, if I'm wrong on that, guys, feel free to, any of you electronic engineers, feel free to correct me um, in the comments below, but I believe that's the way that works. And that certainly uh, is my experience based on what I observed. And it only led to a bunch of other, a bunch of other problems, which resulted in me having to loosen the side panel in order to get at the the fuse down there so I could disconnect the power lead and, and work on the connector without having to worry about, you know, grounding out 100 volts DC through me or to another part of the board. Anyway, so um, I think I'm ready to power it on. But um, I'm going to go ahead and put some things back together first and then I'll try and power it on. Be back in a bit. Okay, guys. I got it back together. Don't mind the missing headlight. I gotta, I gotta sort that out still, but uh, everything's working there as far as I can tell in the circuit. So just need to mount one and plug one in. Um, moment of truth. I've sealed up the side, put the lid back on, screwed it down. Um, let's find out if it powers on. I will say this right out the gate, guys. When the uh, when the board blew, I could barely roll the wheel. I mean, I really had to force it. I had to push it uphill for like a quarter of a mile, half a half mile or so. Man, I was sore the next day from doing that because it, it was, you know, you're fighting the motor because it's shorted to ground, so the magnets are interacting with the coil. And it, it's anyway, it's just, it was tough. You know, it was trying basically trying to charge while I was pushing it. <laughs> and... um it made it difficult to roll. But now that the board's in, it rolls normally, just like you'd expect, okay? So I think that's a pretty good sign. Let's go ahead and fire it up and see what's up. Oh yeah, we're in business. Light's working, it's balanced. Probably need to do a calibration is my guess, because it's a new board, but It's doing what it's supposed to do. All right. Cool. Seems like we're in a good spot. Hope that's helped somebody. Like and subscribe. It helps me. If there's any unicycle gear that you want, uh, check out the description box for some affiliate links that help the channel and help you. In some cases, there may be discount codes like uh, with e-rides. Um, big shout out to Jason at eWheels for getting me this board. Basically had it overnight, which was awesome. And uh, I think we're in a good spot. All right, I'm going to hang up. Appreciate you guys watching, and I'll catch you next time.